three. Happy Easter! He is risen, he is risen indeed. Oh no, can we do that? He is risen, he is risen indeed. Okay. Happy Easter! He is risen. Okay, that's what I'm talking Well, that's why you should say it. Okay, he is risen indeed. Got it, okay. One more time, huh? Quit laughing at me. <laughs> Happy Easter! He's risen! Indeed! <laughs> I said it wrong, huh? Happy Easter! Now I want you to say, He is risen! He is risen indeed! Go! He is risen! He is risen indeed! Happy Easter! Oh, okay, here we go. Go! Happy Easter! Come on, more enthusiasm! Happy Easter! It looks like the big pig. Oh, he's right there. <laughs> go ahead. Happy Easter! Happy Easter. Oh, happy, oh Easter. happy Easter! Oh, it's a video! Yeah, it's oh, a video. Oh, Alright, go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Okay, take two, take two. Happy Easter! Who's risen? No, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Come on, more enthusiasm! Happy Easter! Happy All together, here we go. One, two, three. Happy Easter! There we go. Now, he is risen, he is risen indeed. Don't run away. No, no. <laughs> we like your kids. Here we go, one. Happy Easter, we say happy Easter. Here you go, one, two, three. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! <laughs> now he is risen, he is risen indeed. Hosanna! Blessed is, is the King in the name of the Lord. He is risen, he is risen he indeed. He is risen indeed. Hey, he he's risen. He is risen indeed. Yeah. Let's try that again. Uh, all right, he is risen. No, wait, do I do he is risen? In you do he is risen. I do he is risen indeed. Okay, he is risen indeed. No, wait, <laughs> he is risen. He is risen indeed. <laughs> happy Easter, everybody. Hey, happy Easter. It is so good to be with all of you again on this wonderful day. Man, Easter eclipses Christmas by, uh, you know, by... The length of the moon, right? <laughs> what? That's not even a saying. I don't is know. It? That's not a saying. I don't think so. You're all right, though. <laughs> Man, it is so cool. I am ready to worship Jesus. I am so grateful that He died for me, and I know that He is died for you. And you all got to be really grateful and happy about that too. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We know that you have so many choices yeah. of where to spend your Easter Sunday for whatever reason you chose us and we are yeah. very very thankful and uh, we want to also take a minute right now to just thank everybody that mm. supports this ministry mm. um your giving has kept us right. alive and kept mm -hmm. us going through so the pandemic true. all the different ups and downs the different iterations of how we do church and there's been a faithful group of people that have been with us all along yeah. the way and we couldn't be more thankful to you so thank you yeah, and to those of you who have given to to, to special uh, needs uh, to help people in Ukraine, uh, there's things where you you give um, spontaneously, and those two also are are ways of showing the world that Jesus cares about them. Thank you. Amen. All right. Well, happy Easter. He happy. is risen. He is risen indeed. All right. Let's worship together. <laughs> This is not a show this morning, Gold is not paying up for the tickets. This is participation thing. You have to take part, so clap your hands together. Come on, Jamie, come on, Brian, get that beat going.
during the week, and not one of you were singing the oh ohs. Not one of you. Come on, you've got to do better than this. So I'm going to teach you those words again, okay? Listen carefully. It goes like this. Oh, oh, oh.
Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. You call that one more time. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. Make sure you're practicing this week, right? You ready?
What do you think of when you think of Easter? I know we have a lot of things that we do, a lot of traditions, there are meals, there are Easter egg hunts, there's all sorts of things, but but let's get to the root of the real story. Jesus has risen, and because of that, because of that, death has been defeated, and that's probably the greatest enemy of all. And so there are many reasons to rejoice this Easter, but I want to read you the story about the greatest reason to rejoice. And it's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. And here's what it says. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. It's talking about death itself. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, and the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with the immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, this is a lot of talk about death, but why why aren't we celebrating more just the joy of Easter? But see, here is where the joy is found. You can't appreciate the resurrection until you understand the change it makes in your future and in my future and the hope it brings. You see, Easter is a day of victory, but the truth of the matter is that most of us don't feel very victorious half the time. And so what I want to do today is remind you of God's biggest victory of all. And here's the most important thing you can know about Easter and what it teaches us here today. It teaches us that death doesn't win. This life is not the end. And this passage starts by telling us what what many think is a mystery. What happens when you die? And the truth of the matter is, is that the Bible tells us that this life is not the end because Jesus conquered the grave. And when we read this, when we see this, it talks about the perishable and the imperishable. It talks about things that will pass away. And and here's what I want you to see here in um, Matthew chapter 6. It tells us, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moss and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven 
where moth and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What's it saying? It's saying that so many times we invest in things that are just going to fade away. I mean, think about the clothes that you had to have last year, and now they're outdated this year. Think of the things that you invest in that, that perish. But here what it says is that there are imperishable things. You see, there are only two things that last forever, God and people. And what Jesus wants us to do is see that there is an immortality, there is an imperishable part of this life that the resurrection shows us because death has been swallowed up in victory. You see... This stuff that we put our money into now is all going to fade away, most of it. But the things that are invested in the kingdom of heaven, we trade in for things that are imperishable. We trade in for things that will last. I love the way that Paul states it in Philippians 3.21. He says, there's far more to life for us. We're citizens of high heaven. We're waiting for the arrival of the Savior, the Master Jesus Christ who will transform our earthly bodies into glorious bodies like his own. He'll make us beautiful and whole with the same powerful skill by which he is putting everything as it should be under and around him. You see, the truth of this passage says, shows us that the sting of death is taken away. What is the greatest sting that you've had in your life? Think about that. A broken relationship, death in a family, a lost job. I mean, there are many things that sting. And, and, and here's the thing is that what Paul tells us here is that the greatest thing, the sting of death, is taken away. Because sin and the law are done forever. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. See, the Bible tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, because Jesus rose from the dead, because he paid the price for the things that we've done wrong, those sins are not counted against us anymore. We are set free. We are free to have that relationship with God. We are free to know that our lives are secure because of Jesus' sacrifice, and his resurrection will be our resurrection. You see, Jesus took our sin away, so it no longer has any power. The law is, is the rules that we tend to live by, and there are good rules around, but, but we tend to think that, you know, unless I follow every law just perfectly, then I'm in trouble when it comes time to die. But here's what Jesus says, that's not what matters. What matters is that I gave my life for you, for your sins, for the things you've done wrong. And because I gave my life for you, sting of death is gone. It no longer comes with fear. You know, um, the story is told of a family that was on vacation. They were driving down the road, and, and as they were driving, they had the windows open. It was a warm day, and uh, all of a sudden, this big black bee flew in the car. And the little girl who was sitting in the back just panicked because she was allergic to bees. And she started screaming, Daddy, Daddy, quick, get that bee out of here because it's going to hurt me. Because she knew that she, because she was so allergic to bees that if she was stung by one, that she had about an hour before immediate action was taken or she could die. And the dad pulls the car over and he tries to shoo the bee out and, and the bee's not going anywhere and the daughter's getting more and more panicked. And so what he does is as the bee is kind of clinging to the windshield, the dad puts his hand up on the windshield and keeps it there until he feels that inevitable pain. And when the bee stings him, he opens his hand and the bee flies away and the girl starts panicking again. And, and she says, Daddy, Daddy, it's still here, it's still here. It's going to sting me. And he says, Oh no, sweetheart. That sting will never harm you again. And he opens his hand and he shows his little girl the stinger that's in his hand. That bee can buzz around all he wants, but he's powerless. And when I think of that story, Jesus tells his disciples, look at my hands when he was resurrected. He has Satan's sting, the sting of death, the sting of sin, the sting of deceit, the sting of feeling worthless. Jesus has all those stingers in his hands. And when you see that nailed, scarred hand, realize that on your behalf, Jesus took all the pain that Satan could throw at him. He reduced Satan to a big bee that lost its stinger. All Satan can do is buzz. And that's the victory that Jesus has won for you. That's the whole point of this passage, that the sting of death is taken away because sin and the law are done forever. Death swallowed by triumphant life. 
I love the way the message says it. It says, who got the last word, O death? O death, who's afraid of you now? You see, this thing is gone. Fear is gone. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's a game changer. That says a lot about how we view life and what's important. That says how we view death. You see, this is an incredible gift that God gives us. It's probably the greatest gift of all, is that we don't have to fear the sting of death anymore. You know, um, just recently, I lost my dad. My wife lost her mom. I mean, it's been an interesting year. And yet, the one thing that saw us through that time and still sees us through is that both my dad and my wife's mom both knew Jesus. And because of that, because they placed their trust in him, because they accepted his sacrifice on the cross, because they are joined in him, because Jesus was resurrected, so we believe our parents are in heaven with their Lord. Actually, I have no doubt about that. And you can say, oh, well, that's a nice story that brings you comfort. But I say that's a great truth that brings me joy. And so when I look at this passage, I think of all the enemies that we have, that you have, that I have, right? All the things that can take away our joy, all the things that can rob us uh, of hope and peace in this life. I think of the words in the psalm that says, through, through you we push back our enemies, through your name we trample our foes. I put no trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory. But you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God we make our boasts all day long. And we praise your name forever. Psalm 44. So the question I have for you is what is your victory because of Jesus? What will your daily victory look like? How will you live and move daily in that victory? I was talking to a friend who's just uh, recently um, become a Christian. And he said, you know what? I I just have felt most of my life as if it was hopeless and I was never going to find victory, as he actually used that word. And he says, I I knew it was true because he says, I just noticed that the little things, the little things that can throw me off and just ruin my day, no longer seem to matter. He shared with me how recently he had to take a family member to the hospital. And he was really worried. It was something that was treatable and taken care of. But as he was waking in the emergency room, he saw people coming by with far worse troubles. And he realized that that just put his life in perspective. He was worrying about something that could be treated, but what about everyone else? He thought about um, the person that who the day before had had got flipped him off in traffic because he didn't like the way he was driving. And he said, boy, that would have riled me up and that would have got me so mad. And I found that I was actually starting to pray for that person. And I asked God to take that away from me. And I realized that I wasn't living on my own strength anymore, but I was living in the power of my risen Lord. And he says, Sean, I, I heard you talk about what it means to have victory. And I, he thought, he said, I, I realize that I have victories every day now because of Jesus. He says, I'm not perfect by any means. But because of Christ, I have victory. And as I thought about that, and I thought about, you know, every time that you have an injustice happen to you and you say, Lord, I I choose to trust you instead of giving in to the hopelessness of my situation. You have victory. In the midst of pain and suffering and death, when you say, God, help me through this, you have victory. When you trust Jesus to see you through with your finances and your situation in life, you have victory. And that's not to say you won't ever have problems again. That's not to say you won't ever have troubles again. But you see, the sting is gone of even death itself. And because of that, because of that, we have hope and we have a new life that Easter shows us, that Jesus' resurrection shows us. His resurrection is real. His resurrection is true. Jesus has come to this world so that we might be freed from the sting of death. We might be freed from fear. 
We might be set free from hopelessness. We might be set free from the things that pull us down every single day to realize that there is a God who is in control and nothing will overcome him, not even death itself. And because of that great truth, because of that great truth, this thing is gone. So what's next? After this incredible passage that tells us that now Jesus has been victorious over death itself, the next verse says this, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. You see, to stand firm is to be stable and steadfast, immovable, determined, reliable, not yielding when pressed. The Living Bible even says it this way. It says, since future victory is sure. And then it goes on to talk about we are able to stand firm. We are able to not be moved. We are able to give ourselves fully to the Lord. Or I love the way the message translation says it. It says, with all this going for us, my dear friends, stand your ground, don't hold back. Throw yourselves into the work of the master, confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. You see, it's one thing to be an observer on Easter. It's another thing to say, I'm all in. It's another thing to throw yourself fully into the work of Jesus because you know that it's not a waste of time. I love the way Paul said it in Philippians chapter 1. He says, as long as I'm alive in this body, there is good work for me to do. If I had to choose right now, I hardly know which I'd choose. Hard choice. The desire to break camp here and be with Christ is powerful. Some days I can think of nothing better. (laughs) Paul said, you know what? Death doesn't look so bad now because of Jesus. But then he says this, but most days because of what you you are going through, I am sure that it's better for me to stick it out here So I plan to be around a while, companion to you as your growth and joy in this life of trusting God continues. You see, Paul saw that because of Jesus, he didn't have any fears for what was going to eventually happen to him. He was going to die at some point. We all are. But you see, that didn't hold him captive because this thing was gone. And so he said, as long as I'm here, as long as I'm on, I'm on this planet, I'm going to be all in. I'm not going to hold anything back. I'm going to give my life for Jesus. And that life is going to make a difference in the lives of others. I see my purpose not just about me, but about others. Because of the love that Jesus has shown me, I want to show that same love and let it overflow in my life and have a permanent impact and influence on everyone I encounter. I this last week I had my family's had some hard things going on and and I had a friend just late last night uh, just send me a simple text. He says, "I'm praying for you and your family." And I thought with all the things that this friend had going on that at night before their head hit the pillow, he was thinking of others. And this night he thought of me. And this night he prayed for me. And I'll tell you, that gave me the strength I needed to just rest peacefully this last night. And I think about all the ways that Jesus has given me hope and how I want to share that life with others and how I want to live for Christ. The Bible puts it this simply, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And so when we look at this, my prayer for you is that you would no longer be an observer that you would see that in Christ's victory, you can find your victory. I recently heard a song by an old friend who used to be on our staff, and he's been a worship leader at church in Texas, and John Abel has written some incredible songs. But I, I heard this song recently called King of Victory, and this is how it goes. It says, I'm not going to sing it for you, by the way. It says, Sin, where is your sting? Death, where is your victory? Grave, where is your power? You got no claim on me. You got no claim on me. My God is a risen king. His name is Victory. He is alive in me. The risen king of victory is alive inside of me. Fear, where is your grip? Curse, where is your authority? Hell, where is your king? You got no claim on me. You got no claim on me. 
He lived, he bled, he died, he rose and is alive again. He lived, he bled, he died, he rose and is alive again. He lives, he knows, he saves. Oh, how now I am alive again. You see, Jesus knew better than anyone that death is not the end of the journey, but just the beginning. So my prayer for you this Easter is that the Easter would be the beginning of your victory. So Lord Jesus, I just pray for those who are listening who don't feel victorious at all. And yet the truth of the matter is that you are here. You are here and you love us. You gave your life for us. You rose again on the third day. And that's why this Easter has so much more meaning than a bunch of chocolate eggs and bunnies. It it has hope for us because the sting of death is gone. The victory is ours as we follow you. Oh, Lord, I, I know that every day is not perfect. And I know there are people who are listening to this message and they're saying, I don't feel victorious. I, I am hurting and broken and alone and afraid. And all I can say, Lord, is, Lord, I pray that you would meet these people and meet me in this Easter time that we would see your victory and keep our eyes on you and not turn away. So, Lord, I just pray for those who don't know you that today is the day they would choose you. That today is the day that you would choose Jesus to follow him and to walk in victory. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody. He is risen. He is risen indeed.